flows and surprises us, it's going to be excellent. Really, these hands really free you. Vedic and Spring Awakening deals with some subjects that I think are ever fresh, unfortunately. And that's the chasm between adult ideology, kind of fixed, rigid beliefs, and young people trying to search through innocence for their own experience and for their own survival. This is a remarkable play, especially considering that it was written over 100 years ago. But it was remarkable even then. It was censored for over 60 years, really. And its format also has the ability to, in a way, lead up to expressionism. The ability to take an internal feeling of the character or of the moment and put it out there on the stage. And that's a very theatrical and exciting thing to stage. I wanted to create a play that was speakable and actable and had immediacy and a certain credibility and didn't, in a way, take the audience and, and say, this is a literary experience. I wanted it to be a dramatic experience. So my approach to this play is that it's a nightmare. And it's a nightmare that everybody is encased in. And the so-called expressionistic approach, that is where the outside mirrors the inside emotional state, allows the production to have certain what I'll call meta-theatrical moments. And my approach resonates into the set itself because the chasm between adults and children is emphasized by the fact that the adults who are somehow stultified in what they believe are in masks and are up above. And the children are all down below. And those two, those two areas don't, there's no bridge to them except one single bridge that's used once in the play toward the end. So I just want to take you a little bit through the magic of theater. So here we are in our rehearsal space on the stage of the Kiplinger Theater. And if you look down on the ground, you see various pieces of tape, and you see these, these ladders, and you see this object over here that represents a mirror, and some stones. But you don't really get a sense of where this, what this is going to be like. So let's take a little quick preview, going from this stage and this mock-up to our set in which is being built at the present time. Let me point out one more thing. This little platform is meant, meant to represent the above area where the adults in masks will stand. Okay, follow me. So now we're in the real space. This is the theater. And this is our partially built set. And you can see there's that little platform way, way up in the air. Here are the walls. They're starting to be created with the, with the texture that they will have. The various entrances, you can't even see where the ladders are, but the entrances are here. The ladders will be here. And you can really get a sense of the beginning of the volume that this whole set will, will take up. So you can definitely see the difference between being up here and being on that little low platform. So you have to imagine, both as an actor and a director and a designer, what it's like to exist in this volume, even though you're still in the rehearsal space. And that's part of the fun. Well, Carolyn and I are old friends and old colleagues. We both go back to Minneapolis. That's where we did a lot of our professional work. Carolyn has acted for me in numerous plays, the lead in numerous plays, and she's also a master teacher. So our goal for this production was to take more students than have been in a production for a while, I believe there's 19 students in this production, and to create a little miniature drama school. So. Various members of the faculty would come in. We have, we're lucky enough to have a dramaturgy class that's participating in this production. We do work with masks, with voice, with elements of Michael Chekhov. And, and Carolyn is an expert in Michael Chekhov. So our collaboration has to do with the fact that any production 
is both a directing experience, and by a directing experience I mean you create a world, and within that world the play comes to life. But it's also an acting coaching experience, where you take each individual actor and you figure out how you can help catalyze a performance from that actor, how you can bring that actor to life in, in his or her performance. And Carolyn and I, in a way, have a tag team where we're trying to engage in that activity, even if a person only has a few lines, for example, so that everybody in this production understands that this is a course, an experiential learning course, and you learn something from being in this course regardless of the size of your role. So Carolyn is absolutely essential and really a leader in that endeavor. So when, when David mentioned to me that he was going to be doing this particular play and that he was interested in, in expressionism, I thought, oh, this might be a perfect marriage of a technique and uh, a rehearsal process. The Michael Chekhov technique is a psychophysical technique, meaning that it utilizes the actor's imagination and that then puts images into the body that are activated in performance or in rehearsal. So it's a way of uh, allowing actors to bypass a certain kind of intellectual process that can sometimes keep him or her from accessing the emotional life of the character in an immediate way. I'll be honest, the first time, the first day we did check out work, I was like, huh? <laughs> um, but I can, having worked through some of those exercises, I, I can definitely see the application, especially with my character. It helps me find a, a neutral state and it helps me adapt quicker and not, not worry so much about thinking through things, but just feeling what comes. First of all, I, I hope that the audience will be able to enter a world of experience that is that is deeply felt and stimulated in many different kinds of ways. So I don't think this is going to be, um, well, it won't be a, an experience about realism. It will be about a poetic landscape, a poetic imagining. And in some ways, I think that that roots the issues and the feelings that are, are so much a driving force in the, in the play in, in very particular ways that I, I think will be very vibrant and arresting for an audience. I think that this play really explicates some problems and it's an opportunity to take a good look at it and say, how did this happen? How could it have been different? What, I, what might I do in my lifetime and in my relationships that might be able to make that difference happen?